Hello and welcome to this edition of Assignment Asia. I'm Barnaby Lowe in the Philippine capital, Manila. And where I'm standing right now is the city's Chinatown, one of the oldest such community in the world. You know, you hear a lot of Filipinos say, I've got a little Chinese in me. Well, that's not a stretch. And in this age of social media, some are getting a chance to discover their roots in China. Abraham Go may have seen and experienced much of what life has to offer. But up until recently, a part of him, he said, was missing. He wanted to be able to go to China. Probably was, Abra has tried and failed to get a passport, twice. He says he was told to prove he was a citizen, but what proof he could offer got rejected. <laughs> In the Philippines, a person born before 1973 isn't Filipino unless his father is. Abraham, or Abra, is in fact part Chinese, at least by blood. His father, Wu Xinsi, or Go Xinsi in Minan dialect, migrated from China's coastal province of Fujian in 1938. So ngayon, nandito po tayo sa TFA dito sa Manila. Susubukan niyo po ulit kumuha ng passport. Ganun niyo ko, ganun niyo ko gustong makarating ng China sa hometown po nung tatay niyo sa China. Kasi ano eh, uh, parang enjoy ako na pagunta doon kasi ngayon lang kami magkikita-kita sa tagal ng panahon. Yun. Somewhere deep down, there's a desire to reconnect with and discover more about his Chinese ancestry. But Abra doesn't even speak a word of Chinese and has lived almost all his life in Katarman in the central Philippines, where even at his age, he works as a tricycle driver. Yeah, nationality, Filipino. That's what it says in his marriage contract. I have no doubt you are Filipino. I hope they give you your passport. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> Moments later, we saw Abra walking towards us with a smile. He was finally granted a Philippine passport. It would take six more months of waiting. But Abra, together with his brother David and niece Marisa, was finally able to set foot in China. More of their journey next. Abraham Go and his entire family grew up very Filipino. Although his father is from China, he hardly ever spoke Chinese with them. So from the moment he found out he has family in China, to realizing he has the opportunity to be able to go to China to meet them and be able to discover more about himself, 
and in between having difficulty proving his Filipino citizenship. That's all been quite a journey for him. The real journey, however, is just about to begin. It took six more months of waiting. But the day finally came. Abra, together with his older brother David and niece Marisa. In Trento, the Chinese city his father left. They knew they'd been met by family but they never imagined to be greeted with such warmth and hospitality. After all, this was family Abra and David's father had abandoned 80 years ago. Despite the language barrier, they found ways to connect with each other. So Abra and David surprised that Jia Xu had kept all the letters and photos they've been sending from the Philippines since they found each other. Napakasaya ko ngayon kasi ngayon kami nagkakita-kita na mga matatanda na kami. Hindi sa panagilip eh, hindi ko maisip na nakarating ako dito. <laughs> And if there ever was regret or resentment, it was one they didn't have control over. And he did he never made it back here? And it gives some Abra and David say their father, Ujiaxi's grandfather, never once mentioned that he left behind a family in China. Ninya na kwento as as in hanggang pagkamatay niya hindi rin. Eh paano niyo nalaman na meron kayo ngayon nga nang nalaman namin na mayroon pala kaming half brother doon sa China. Hindi sa panaginip Nipisa pa naginip ko, wala wala siya isip ko na mayroon pala akong half brother doon. Pero paano niyo nalaman? Pa paano nga na pa, kay Bang Eddie po mano Abra. Kay Bang Eddie de la Cruz. Dalabalari niya. Eddie de la Cruz was a former mayor of Katarman and father of Eduardo de la Cruz Jr. or Ed. It was actually Ed who served as bridge between Abra and David and their relatives in China after a friend of his father, who was also Usinsis, a former employer, was able to obtain an address and a phone number in China. The employer had apparently known about Usinsis' family in China for years. Yeah, so Mr. Abraham, Go, we call him Mano Abra. No, so Mano Abra asked help to contact his relatives. And I, I recall that incident wherein my cousin was able to help 
um, my uncle find his relatives. So I also con contacted her and asked if she can call that number. Since they found out they've got family in China, Abra and David have been wanting to visit. Doon pa sana ako pupunta doon, pero ang isang iniisip ko, yung pera, yung pamasahe, yung panggastos. Jashri knew they had family in the Philippines. He had the means to travel, but didn't know how to get in touch with them. His father, who passed away years ago, had maintained contact with his grandfather. Jashri says his father had one dying wish. So after several phone calls and emails, the two sides of the family met for the first time in Katarman, with Utiashi traveling solo from China. ก็เอาเจ้าของก็ที่เซ็กเก้าหน้าเบบีนี่ก็สังสังว่ากันว่าเซ็ตุนี่ก็เดี๋ยวหน้าเบบีอย่างบางทีอย่างนะกีตาร
Eduardo de la Cruz Jr. was supposed to have ended his mission after he found his relatives in China. Little did he know that a small personal project would end up being an advocacy. Like Ed, I had an on and off curiosity about my family's roots in China. So when I found out on Facebook about the volunteer work that he does, I got in touch with him. And the rest, as they say, is history. As people found out about Eduardo de la Cruz Jr.'s success in finding his Chinese relatives, he started getting requests to find their own relatives. Abras was one of the first. Ed didn't turn them down. He found a mission instead. He had established contacts in China who were willing to help. But what was really heartening, he says, was that even strangers responded positively. So when I was looking, I was checking the internet. I found this blog and then someone said, please help me look for my relatives in Xiamen. His method was to course it through the media, through um, television, um, newspaper, and the police. He was able, eventually able to find uh, mm -hmm. the relatives of our friend through television broadcast. Wow. <laughs> And that's, that's the one, one that I saw. That's the one that yeah. you saw that okay. had a, re yeah. uh, a reunion in yeah. via the noontime show. Despite the downturn in relations between the two countries in 2012, the search for relatives in China continued. There are at least 2 million Chinese Filipinos or Chinois. Each of them with blood ties to China, one way or another. Ed studied Chinese so he wouldn't have to rely on translators. He wrote about his involvement and joined online communities to build an even wider network of contacts and to encourage more to discover their Chinese roots. <laughs> I was one of those whose interest his work had sparked. You see, I was born and raised in Manila, but my family is ethnic Chinese. My grandparents from both sides left China for the Philippines in the 1930s in search of a better life. My paternal grandmother lived with us, and yet not once did she tell me about her life in China. I asked my father if there was any chance we still had family in China, and he said all he knew was that my grandmother had an older brother, who he'd also never met. But that was a start. Believing I could still have relatives in China, Ed and I started looking for leads, starting in Manila's Chinese cemetery. Okay, so Ed, the Chinese cemetery can sometimes be instrumental in your search for uh, missing relatives. Uh, yeah, um, basically because of the how the Chinese um, the practices in uh, putting marks into their tombstones. Yeah. So, what do you see here that could be vital in finding my family in China? So <clears throat> first, uh, for this, uh, for the portal of your mausoleum, at the top you'll see your clan name. So okay. basically, if you go to clan associations here or in China, mm -hmm. you'll be able to get the list of villages that are members of this particular clan. So, Ed, there's more information inside, right? Do you see anything here that could be useful for me to uh, find my family in China? Uh, for Chinese epitaphs. Uh, what's really important, aside from the name, is the uh, Chinese always include the town of origin. It's very important. So th this particular information would be really helpful for you to trace your relatives. So okay. for this example, um, you have here your hometown and the village. <coughs> so it's okay. Jinjiang. Jinjiang is a huge city in China though. So I needed to find more leads to narrow down the search. 
Okay, so this is or was my grandmother's room. Uh, she died in uh, 2010. So it's also been years since uh, I was last here, actually. Um, I was told that if I try to look uh, or to search among her things, that I might be able to find something, a clue, as to where I can find our relatives in China. So um, forgive me, <laughs> my grandmother, but I'm going to raid your closet. Okay. Ooh, photos. And these are photos as well. <laughs> I think this is a treasure trove. Um, this, I think, is probably, probably my grandmother's brother. Ha! Huh. I think these are my relatives in China. I think these are my relatives in China. I just have to find out where they are. Hmm. Okay, so, um... Ha! <laughs> I think, um, I found uh, what is probably uh, the most important piece of evidence now that I have that, uh, that I do have relatives in China. Um, this is a, a letter envelope that has an address both in the Philippines and in China. So it's uh, either my grandmother sent a letter to China or someone from China sent her a letter. In any case, there's an address in China and uh, I guess this is where I'm gonna start. Yeah? A few days later, a first-generation Chinese immigrant, Ed Nu, gave me a name and a phone number. Before I knew it, I was already in China, making my way to my family's hometown. Okay, so we are on our way right now to the village where my relatives here in China live. I've never met them. My dad, my aunts, my uncles, they've never met them. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, this is family that I never knew existed. So, and, and you know, I don't know if they knew that I existed too. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be very exciting. We met at a local restaurant, and when we saw each other, we were just all smiles. Shi <laughs> Yanglong was the uncle I spoke with on the phone. One look at him, and I knew he was family. <laughs> Turns out he knew my uncle Jimmy. In fact, he knew quite a few things about us. Huh. Shi Yanglong even had photos of my aunts and uncles. Oh, Oh, 
。哦，啊、对，阮老爸啦。您老爸就是阮阿妈的。诶、欸，阿、啊、兄，阿、啊、兄。I showed my Chinese relatives photos as well, but it's a shame I didn't know much about them. I wasn't even aware that my grandmother had visited them once in China. 阿妈，甲这个刘啊，这个你叫阿姆的哦，这三甲来来，我们搞阮老爸屋啊。八一年，八一年，八一年，啊，八十一年，八十一年哦，我出事。What I did know was the name of the village where my grandfather was from. I asked my uncles to take me there. So uh, this is apparently the village of my uh, grandfather. Uh, my Family from my grandmother's side, they don't know anyone here.、Um, but everyone here apparently has the same last name that I do. So I'm just gonna have a walk around here just to get a feel of what my grandfather's village is like.、Uh, it seems, it seems right now it's、uh, very modern. It wasn't hard for me to imagine, however, how difficult. Life must have been for my grandfather here. He was an orphan. I was told it's probably why I couldn't find anyone to connect with from his side of my family. But here's something I learned from my grandmother. Never lose your connection with family, even after they've passed on. I couldn't leave without visiting my grand uncle's tombstone. It was a fitting end to a trip that's been one for the books for me, but even more so for Abra and David. Yung po yung pumunta po tayo sa China. Ano po yung pinaka hindi yung malilimutan? Nagakap. Winilkam kami, welcome. Nagakap, ina inakap kami. Oh, de sila rin mismo excited din sila na makita kami. Kaya tigil nagkaintindihan.、Hmm. Kaya tindi kami nagkaintindihan. Mas nalaman namin na kadugo namin sila. Kapatid hap brother namin yung magulang nila. One, two, three. Abra and David's family and mine. Are just two of over 30 families that have gotten together through the help of Eduardo de la Cruz Jr. Ed says that's just the tip of the iceberg. He sees more family reunions on the horizon. His ongoing mission proves that family transcends political boundaries. <laughs> Governments may not always see eye to eye, and tensions and frictions are often inevitable in any bilateral relations. But the ties to peoples are not bound by politics, not even trade or economics. Rather, it is blood ties, family relations, and friendships that have transcended and continue to withstand the test of time. You can learn more about this story on our website. www.simon-asia.com. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Barnaby Lo. Thanks for watching, and join us again on the Simon Asia. Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media.